We are here at Halo with Sam from Smactive, the founder and CEO. Uh, exciting things going on with the mobile app and wanted our network to know exactly what's going on with Smactive and how the rollout's going. Yeah, Smactive's going great. So uh, we're starting uh, some grassroots in Princeton, at Princeton University in New Jersey, and we're starting an um, uh, ambassador program there so that we can get the kids on the campus there doing different things um, on and off campus to help drive uh, people to download the app and give us feedback, do user groups and focus groups, uh, give us feedback on if something's good or bad or what we can do to make the app better for them so that it's not only an app that they download and use once, but something they, you know, they use retentively. They come back and they use it again and again, tell people about it and find new friends nearby to do different activities. So when you look at what people are using the app for today, you know, we, as I understand, we've got New York, New Jersey, and Southern California is basically like the beta test markets to roll out. What, what are you seeing people doing on the app and what kind of feedback have you been getting? Yeah, so far it's been great. So most people are, that we see the top activities are gym and tennis, uh, bowling, and uh, chess. We've seen a bunch of people playing chess that want to play chess, and they meet people through the app to play chess. Um, but tennis is definitely the most popular along with gym. And we're finding that working with different gyms, uh, like Workout World, um, that we're starting to see users using the hashtag Workout World, uh, or whatever gym they might be attending, and trying to find people nearby at the gym or around to do X activity with, if it's tennis or uh, some type of lifting weights or basketball, or even if it's just shopping or walking, whatever it might be. Anything act active or uh, healthy that they can do, people seem to be wanting to do, meeting nearby instantly to do those activities. So, so you started the company about six months ago, and from a standpoint of looking at what, uh, you know, what frustration you're solving, it seems like there are more and more articles addressing the negative effects of loneliness. Yeah, there uh, are. There's and, a lot of and, stuff uh, like that. You know, it seems almost like the right place, right time, uh, but people have been lonely for a long time, right. but it seems like people are just starting to write about it now. Right. So how do, you, how do you feel about that and kind of being in a position where these articles are kind of just kind of falling in your lap, if yeah. you will. I'm beyond excited to help people to tap a button and find someone to not be lonely with anymore. You know, that's why I created the app originally was to find people for myself to do activities with. So I've met someone to go bowling with, I've met someone to play tennis with, and I'm still looking for someone to play Scrabble with. So if that's you, let me know. Go on the app and download it and message me and we'll go from, we can go from there. Um, but the idea is that you know, not only for me, I figured if it works for me, then hopefully it'll work for other people. And we're seeing very positive results and positive feedback from people meeting and having new relationships that they wouldn't have had without the app. So, so from a standpoint of you've got, uh, you know, dating apps, you've got transportation apps and, you know, trying to find people, uh, you know, that's kind of, what, you know, where you're headed is you're basically a, a it's not a dating app, it's a, it's a, to find strangers that are nearby that, that are yeah we don't want to be looked at as a dating app um, you know it, it feels a little dating in terms of you know apps like tinder and other apps that are out there in terms of what people might be used to but our number one goal is activities and uh, we're working on versions of the app so that it's the activity first and the people second so that people can see the activities first um, see what type of activity they may be interested in tap on it see who's around to do that activity and then simply message that person and be instantly talking with someone to do it with uh, so we don't want to be looked at as a dating app at all. If dating happens and romance happens, then that's cool. Uh, but we want to be focused on the activity and get people not lazy, not uh, you know uh, lonely. Get up and get out and do it, and here's an outlet to do it instantly. So from a standpoint of how some people have been using the app for their business, uh, is what I've seen as I've been using the app, is that a restaurant has uh, notified people when they have certain game nights or specials yep. Uh, I've seen personal trainers go on there and say, hey, I'm doing a workout at the beach, yep. and it goes out, or it's, it's, uh, it's viewed by other people in that area. Do you kind of see this app being used by groups to basically make sure that they can put out their flash information to their members without having to send a text message or, a, or an email, but basically everything's kind of going through the Smactive platform? Yeah, that's platform. right. So in the new version of Smactive, which should be out in the next two weeks, um, depending on what date this airs, um, the idea is that we'll have groups as part of the app. So instead of just activities, it'll also be group activities. So the idea is that people can see at a gym, let's say they can use a hashtag, uh, let's use Workout World since we're already working with them, that Workout World will be the group, uh, the place where you want to have the activity happen. And then if you tap on that, you'll see all the people that are at Workout World that you can message and do an activity. It's the same thing if you want to play Scrabble at Starbucks or 
um, you know, you can use the hashtag Starbucks in Times Square. And then you see the people that are doing that. If it's not existing right now, you can make your own hashtag for whatever activity you want to do, wherever you want to do it. And then that becomes your group in, at that location. And then everybody that does that with you, then they'll be messaging and doing activities in these places using the, the business as the group or whatever activity you want it to be as the group activity. So Sam, I understand that one of the ways that you're looking to grow the business is to really embed yourself uh, with college kids. And Definitely. you know, obviously when a freshman goes to college, probably the first thing they do is they're trying to look for friends that have common interests. Uh, so you can talk a little bit about what the ambassador program is, not the full details, but you know, why college students should get involved, what that offers them, what they're gonna learn from you and yeah. your team. Yeah, so we already have a bunch of students at Princeton University. Uh, we have a few at Binghamton University and we're working on some other universities uh, to get the ball rolling in those locations so that we can see how if I'm a freshman or really any, any level student, but if I'm a freshman, I go to school and you know, I feel overwhelmed maybe that I you know, don't have people that I knew in this new place. Um, and from what we're hearing so far from Princeton and other colleges is that this is amazing. This is something that we all wanna use. We all, wanna, we all have time in between classes even though studying is you know, crazy and all that. Um, we have time to do certain activities that, you know, maybe the friends that we've made, or if we're lonely and we don't know who to act, we might just sit there and, you know, not do anything. Um, so this app gives us the ability, is what we're hearing, um, to find people at the, on campus. Could be in the same quad, could be in the same building, could be across the campus, could live off campus, but they can still use the hashtag Princeton for, you know, X gym at the on campus or whatever it might be. So that I want to play badminton and I use that hashtag at Princeton and then I can go ahead and be uh, meeting someone to do that. Also at Princeton specifically in the new, in the new version of Smactive, which will be out again shortly, is we're verifying the users at Princeton so that they feel like they know that that user has a princeton.edu email address and then they can go ahead and, and know that whoever they're communicating with is an actual Princeton student. Once they have that from what we've heard and seen so far, um, it's very, uh, gives them the warm and fuzzies if you will, because it makes them feel like they know that they can trust who they're meeting and we want trust and safety to be number one priority in the app and the experience because you're meeting someone you don't know. So, you know, the main goal uh, for an ambassador uh, is to be one of the early adopters on the campus, whatever campus it might be. Contact us. Uh, you can contact us at work at smactive.com email or you can go to Smactive, the app, and just message me directly. And basically we can tr try to figure out how we can work with you on campus to, you know, be an early adopter and try to get feedback and make it better so that if you have free time or you have downtime or you just feel like playing racquetball or whatever it might be that you can find someone to do it on campus or right off campus. So uh, I'd be dating myself here, but back in the 90s, uh, if we had mobile phones or we had mobile apps, this sounds like something the social chairman of a fraternity or a, a sorority or a, you know business group or a study group would use to basically communicate with everyone yeah. around them. And basically what you're doing with the ambassador program, if I understand it, is to basically take people that are already doing this function with their friends or with people around them or in their groups and basically providing them the technology and allowing them to become, you know, kind of your uh, liaison or, you know, have, have like a different badge, if you will. Yeah, that's right. So exactly. So people will be given their power to create their own genre of group, whatever it might be. If it's studying, um, you know, whatever they want to do, whatever it is that you want to do, you can open up Smactive, make, get yourself active, use the status we basically recreated Twitter so you have 140 characters to write whatever it is that you want to be doing right now or today. If you post your status, then you tap get active and then you're active in the community. Another amazing feature that's in the app that I really want to make sure that people know about is that in your settings you can choose that you want to be seen by a certain person uh, or a certain genre, um, uh, so a certain, uh, you know, either male or female. So if I'm a guy and I just want to go play racquetball with another guy, I can choose that. If I'm a girl and I don't want to be seen by men, uh, I can just choose that in my settings and I'm instantly invisible to men. I can choose the age group, uh, the age range, um, and, and those types of settings are invaluable to users we're finding. They can't believe that they could just be choosing the type of people that they want to be seen by and then be contacted or message whoever it is that they want to do an activity right now. It's really instant people. Yeah, I, li I like the tagline of, of instant humans. Yep. Uh, you know, when you first told me about it several months ago, you know, it, it took a while to settle in. Uh, but I think it's a great, you know, def definition of what you're trying to do. It's just what it is. Um, just instant humans, just like I need instant coffee, I've got instant people <laughs> That's to right, play you with. want coffee, you do that. You want a car, you try Uber. If you want a person, you use Smactive.
Right. And then uh, what kind of advice would you give to, to entrepreneurs that are starting up businesses and mobile apps or technology or software companies, you know, uh, what, what are some of the things that you've kind of learned as you've gone through several processes of, you know, launching things and, and yeah. you know, some takeaways. The most for, important for thing, most important thing is to be passionate and love what you do and make sure that it's going to have a real impact on people, especially yourself. Because if you wake up and you love what you do, you'll never work ever. It's just something I wake up every day and I just love this whole idea of Smacktive and, and getting people together. And I just don't feel like I'm working. I mean, I'm working really hard. I'm working 100 hours a week. It doesn't feel like it. It feels like I'm doing what I love. And that I can hopefully have, and I believe I will have, a, a huge impact on the world doing it. Um, you know, that's my advice is just love what you do. Yeah. And, for, and from a standpoint of people understanding, since you've been through it several times, you know, how long it takes to get an idea, put it on paper, get it developed, move it to a, a beta test, to marketing, you know, maybe, you know, you've been through it several times, I've been through it several times, but maybe just give people some advice on, you know, that you have to have patience and that, oh, yeah. you know, well, you yeah, know like I mean, this is so, how things roll. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, my brain works a thousand miles an hour and I want the app to be, and, and any business I do to be, you know, in millions of people's uh, hands, like tomorrow, really yesterday actually. And the problem is, is that that doesn't happen unless you have, you know, $50 million to spend on marketing, like right away. So the most important thing is to make sure that you realize that you need to uh, understand that it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And you have to take the time and, and understand uh, what the flow is of getting users for an app especially. Uh, but any business is that you need to get users, you need to get people retentive to come back and talk about the app and talk about it. And it needs to have enough impact on them that they go and tell other people about it. On the grassroots side where you know, we're seeing it at places like Princeton where you know, people are talking about the app that's something that's invaluable and it gets people to talk more and more about it on the ground and then that'll turn to translate into digital now where they'll you know tweet about it or use it on Facebook or Instagram it or Vine it or meerkat it at this point or whatever else people are going to do. Um, so just understand that, that those things and uh, you know understand that you want to surround yourself with great people that understand your vision and um, you know know that it's going to take some time to get there but if you have something special enough you will get there. Great. All right. Well, I want to thank Sam for joining us on Halo, and it sounds like exciting things happening quickly at Smacktive. Smacking it up. Always smacking. <laughs>